Rum, sugar, lime, mint. The Mojito. A wonderful cocktail to enjoy on a hot summer afternoon. Welcome to the Cocktail Spirit from Small Screen Network. I'm your host, Robert Hess. These days, it seems the cocktail everyone's talking about is the mojito. Uh, customers love it. Bartenders often hate it just because it's so hard to make. Um, a pointer I'll give to you customers, if you're in a bar and you see that it's busy, please don't order a mojito because it really takes an awful lot of work from the bartender. And if you're going to get a good one, he's not going to like making it for you. If he likes making it for you in a busy bar, it's because he's taking so many shortcuts, you're not going to get a good one. So wait for the bar to be a little bit more on the quiet, relaxed side if you want to order a mojito, and never order them for the entire table. Mojito is actually a fairly old drink. It comes to us from Cuba, um, where the people working and living in Cuba would take and combine their rum with a little bit of sugar and a little bit of lime juice in order to take and make the rum more palatable and make it drinker and easier to use. They'd add often some water to it as well so it could be more of a thirst quenching drink than it would be a drink that they wanted to get drunk off of. The beaches in uh, Cuba were constantly filled with different little bars and, and little shacks that would make the mojitos for them. There was a, an owner of a little grocery store inside of Cuba that went down to all these little mojito shacks along the beach, tried all the different ones of them, and then he took and tried figuring out the best way to make the mojito, and that's what he actually made in his grocery store. Yes, I said grocery store. The grocery stores would often have a little bar on the side. Um, I'm assuming maybe that was so that the women could do the shopping and the men could be waiting for the women in the bar. I don't know. I'm going to have to go to Cuba one of these days to find out. Um, Ernest Hemingway discovered this little grocery store and he started l drinking the mojitos and loving the mojitos there. And so that's one of the ways the mojito became very famous because Ernest Hemingway was introducing it to all of his friends. Let's get started. We start with a regular pint glass. To this, we're going to take and add about 12 or so leaves of mint. Mint can sometimes be rather hard to find especially fresh all times of the year. And so I always recommend that if a bar is going to serve mojitos and put on their menu, they try to take and focus on when mint, when they can get really good fresh quality mint. And if they can't get fresh quality mint, just simply say, we're not making mojitos now because they're out of season. That's kind of the, the slow foods way of doing things. Now I'm going to use some sugar. Now I know we've talked in the past about using granulated sugar versus simple syrup and the fact that granulated sugar doesn't dissolve well in alcohol and cold and stuff like that. But it also adds kind of an abrasive feature. And I'm actually going to make use of that abrasive feature on the mint leaves. Um, I don't want to actually muddle the mint leaves too hard themselves because that'll take and bring out some of the more coarser, bitter oils out of it. But by using sugar, it actually, the abrasive allows the oils to come out better without bringing out the bitterness. To this, I'm going to add just a small bit of soda water just to assist the process and to help dissolve the sugar that much better. Now, all we're trying to do now is extract some of the essential oils out of the mint leaves and not crushing them super hard. Again, you might see people trying to do this with an ice-filled tumbler. It's really not going to work well. You can only do it and can really control what you're doing by doing it without the ice, or what I would call a dry muddle. I'm not doing it specifically hard. I'm just gently tapping on the leaves to get the mint flavor out of it. I think that's about enough there. So now we're going to take and add an ounce and a half 
of white rum. And then some lime juice. In this case, we're going to add three quarters of an ounce of lime juice. Now we're going to add some ice. This is what they call a, a built cocktail, which means we're actually building it in the glass. It's not going to have a shaker or, or stirring mix or thing. And so this is going to be the glass we actually serve the drink as well. You notice I've only half filled the glass with ice. This allows me to stir it up that much better. with ice. And now we top it off with soda. Remember this is intended to be a refreshing, thirst quenching drink. And that's why the soda comes in to soften it off. Give it a little bit more of a stir now to help mix things up. You don't want to stir an awful lot. Now we take a lime. You can actually cut this piece of lime in half again to make two pieces. I'm going to put one piece down into the glass, and the other piece I'm going to cut and add to the rim. I'm going to add two tall straws, and a mojito. Now, different bartenders are going to have different styles of making a mojito. Sometimes they'll be using finely crushed ice. Sometimes they'll take and layer crushed ice and mint, crushed ice and mint, crushed ice and mint, using powdered sugar. Sometimes they'll take and shake that and then strain it in. In this case, I'm using the larger, slightly larger style ice rather than the crushed ice. I'm leaving the mint in the glass. Since I didn't muddle it super hard, there's still fairly full chunks of mint, so they're going to float and look nice in the glass. And the lime adds a little bit extra color inside as well. The Mojito Cocktail, a wonderful way to relax, refreshing, thirst quenching on a hot summer afternoon.